In 2020, the chairman of the Fed, Jay Paul, took one of the most important decisions of his life, which is lowering interest rates to almost 0%. That shaked the housing market, which is the largest market in the United States that cost almost $60 trillion. If you have purchased a house in 2016, let's say a $300,000 house, within the next three years, the price of that house would have increased by 10% at best. But if you have purchased the exact same house in 2020 for $300,000, within the next two years, the price of that house would have increased by at least 50%. An asset class that typically rises by 2 or 3% at best is rising dramatically by 50% in just two years. That's such a short period of time for houses to rise that much. And every time something like that ever happens, it turns into a bubble and it bursts. Despite the fact that chances of another recession is rising, house prices are not stopping. Yes, they have slowed down slightly, but that's still faster than the average 2 or 3%. And if the Fed is going to do what j Bull promised in the last press conference, then house prices are going to explode by the end of the year, which will turn that bubble into a bigger bubble and will burst, which will make the next recession or the next crisis way more painful. Buying a house is not like buying a stock or crypto, like you can just pull out your phone and just buy a house for less than $100. Buying a house is one of the most important decisions you will ever make because houses typically cost at least a few hundred thousand dollars. And if you are in a place like California, New York, or London, then you're looking into a few million dollars to buy a property. And then you will have to save for years for the down payment. And then you will be locked into a 30-year-old mortgage, which is why the demand for houses isn't like the demand for crypto or stocks. And that's why house prices usually rise by like 2 or 3%. Maybe the best case scenario is 4%. But here we have a situation where house prices have been exploding. And even though the Fed has raised the rate so dramatically, they're still rising and could rise way faster by the end of the year. So let's try to figure out what exactly is happening here and why the next crash, why the upcoming housing crash could be way worse than what happened in 2008 that destroyed the global economy. If you're ready, give this video a thumbs up and let's dive in. 2001 and 2002 were interesting years when the stock market collapsed. Over 90% of tech companies filed for bankruptcy because they could not survive. Only a handful of companies survived such as Amazon that today became some of the largest companies in the world and Google is among them. So investors were afraid to throw their money into tech stocks again because they saw that their investments went down by over 90%. It reminds me of what happened to crypto back in 2017 and 2018. Anyways, investors after that started looking for a less riskier investment. They were afraid to throw their money into something so volatile like internet companies, which is why they settled for the housing market. A house is not like your typical asset out there. A house satisfies one of your basic needs, which it provides a shelter over your head. So no matter what happens to the housing market, no matter how big is the bubble is going to be, no matter how overrated the price are going to be, it's impossible for the housing market to crash to the rock bottom because at the end of the day, the house is still there. Yes, if one person defaults on his mortgage, you can just seize the house and just sell it to someone else or rent it to someone else because there will always be a demand for a roof over your head, especially when the population is growing, people want houses, people want a place to stay. What happened in 2020 is very similar to what happened in 2002 and 2003, when the Fed lowered dramatically interest rates. Now, lowering rates increases the demand for houses because that makes mortgages more accessible. Before, you could not afford a house because you had to make a minimal payment, let's say, of $2,000. But because mortgage rates are now down, you can make the $2,000 payment and you're qualified to buy that house. What happened in 2020 is very similar to what was happening back in the early 2000s when the Fed dramatically lowered interest rates to zero. Now, lower rates makes buying a house more accessible to more people. Let's say, for example, you qualify to a $2,000 payment per month. Because mortgage rates are high, because interest rates are high, you cannot buy that house. 
And then suddenly the Fed lowers interest rates and now you can afford that house because you can afford a $2,000 monthly payment. That instantly creates massive demand in the housing market, which led house prices to dramatically rise, turn into a bubble and burst. Now, a lot of people don't remember, but the 2008 financial crisis was one of the worst crises probably in the last 50 years. It was the reason why Satoshi Nakamoto came out with Bitcoin that revolutionized the financial industry. And today it's an asset class by itself. While the US economy has been growing since 2008, the real economy hasn't been growing at all. Because the 2008 was that turning point when the Fed got hooked on this cheap money. Yes, the GDP is growing. Yes, numbers are growing dramatically. But if you look at the quality of lives that people are having, it has been going down since then. Why? Because the real economy isn't growing. Wages, the real wages are falling down. We're having massive inflation. Yes, you're making more money right now, but the real value, the purchasing value of your money, you can buy less things with that money right now because the real economy isn't growing. The productivity of people are going down since 2008. People are having less babies. And the consequences of that 2008 crisis is still felt today. And in some countries that if you look around, such as Greece and Spain, they haven't fully recovered, even though that we made, we went through another major crisis in 2020. $19 trillion was wiped out in the 2008 financial crisis. If you look at the balance sheet of the Fed since its inception, since the Fed was created in 1914 until 2007, the total amount of money that was printed by the Fed was less than a trillion dollars. It was around $800 billion. And then since 2008 until 2024, that balance sheet has grown to $9 trillion. Do you see that big jump? Yes, $800 billion is a lot of money that the Fed printed. But the Fed printed that much money over the course of almost a century. And here in the next 15 to 17 years, it created nine times more money than it did during the last century. So are we on the brink of repeating the 2008 financial crisis? Will the next crisis be worse than the 2008 financial crisis? Are we going from bad to worse? If the upcoming crisis is going to be as big as it was in 2008, then that will be the end of the United States economy as the global economy that controls the world. Because the rest of the world over the last two decades has caught up with the United States. But if you just zoom in and take a look at the factors that drove prices back in the early 2000s and 2020, you will find out that the factors are very different. Like if you just go back to the early 2000s, yes, we also had like low interest rates started driving prices higher. But another thing that happened back then was that there were loose regulations by the banking industry that made it extremely easy to buy a house. Like investors were throwing so much money into the housing market. Wall Street wanted to benefit from this capital. So they started losing regulations and giving mortgages to everybody. So anybody, even a lazy person could go to the bank without any down payment, just buy a house. And some people who didn't really have a proper job, people who did not put down payment, could afford two or three houses. So that dramatic increase in demand led prices to keep rising faster than ever, which turned into a bubble and then it burst, creating the crisis back in 2008. But if you go back to 2020, yes, part of it is because the Fed had lowered the rates to zero. That meant that mortgages are now more affordable. Now you see, the most important factor when it comes to buying a house is your mortgage rate. A single percent difference in your mortgage rate is going to be a difference between paying a few hundred extra dollars every month or maybe a few thousand extra dollars every month. And if you just add up that over the next 20 or 30 years, which is going to be the period of your mortgage, that will turn into a substantial amount of money. So when there is a difference, like before 2020, your mortgage could be five, six or 7%. Now, because interest rates are at 0%, you can get a mortgage for 2.5 or 3%, which means that now you're qualified to buy a house. You're qualified to buy the house of your dream, which is why a lot of people went in and started buying a house, which led to the increase in prices. 
But that's not the only factor that led prices to rise so fast. When the 2008 financial crisis happened, a lot of developers filed for bankruptcy because houses lost like 30 or 40 percent of their value. It crushed the global economy. A lot of developers could not survive. So the number of developers since then has shrunk dramatically. A lot of companies did, did not go into the housing market. Why? Because it was not really profitable. Before 2020, house prices would rise by 2 or 3% at best. I mean, why go into real estate where you can go into any other market and make much more money? So when 2020 happened, when there was such a huge demand for houses because of low interest rates, there were not enough houses in the market. There were not enough developers that could build those houses. And at the same time, because of the pandemic, we had a disruption of the global supply chain. It was now much more expensive, much more difficult for these developers to ship products from the rest of the world to keep building. And because people were forced to stay in their homes, so people realized that we don't know when the pandemic is going to be over. So it's better for us to just move to a bigger house, which created a bigger demand, a higher demand for houses, which led house prices to rise even faster. As you can see that, the factors that drove prices back in the early 2000s are very different from the factors that drove prices in 2020 and 2021 and are driving still today. But regardless of the factors that are driving prices higher, any asset that rises in value by 2 or 3% at best annually suddenly starts growing by 20 or 30% annually in such a short period of time, it turns into a bubble. And if you look at the history of bubbles, bubbles tend to burst. So why haven't the housing market collapsed yet? What exactly are we waiting for? When exactly will it collapse? The housing market in the United States is in a very weird situation that I think that even the Fed itself has literally no idea how to fix it. On one side, the Fed has hiked the rates to over 5% in order to bring inflation down because we had massive inflation over the last few years that the Fed itself created. Yes, the Fed has brought inflation down to around 3.5% and it still has a long way to go to 2% as the Jay Paul himself said. But that did not really reflect it in the housing prices. Yes, house prices aren't growing as fast as they used to, but they're still growing and there was not a correction. And Jay Paul said that the Fed could lower the rates as early as this year. In fact, there could be three cut rates by the end of the year. Of course, the Fed is going to be very careful because if there is going to be a minor mistake, it could undo everything that the Fed has done over the last two years to bring inflation down. But here's the thing. A single drop in interest rates is going to make houses affordable for an extra million people. So if the Fed is going to lower the rates by the end of the year, that will create more demand in the market for houses, which will keep house prices to rise again. So house prices are not going to fall. There is not going to be a correction because the Fed intends to lower interest rates for one reason or another. I mean, it makes sense from one side, but from another, we haven't fixed inflation entirely. There was not a correction in the housing market yet. From the other side, if the Fed is not going to lower the rates, houses will still keep being unaffordable for most people. And the people who purchased houses back in 2020 and 2021 are not willing to sell their houses. They have locked a 30-year mortgage on their houses back then. So it doesn't make sense to sell their houses right now and buy a new house and get a mortgage rate that is going to be 6 or 7%. So as long as interest rates are high, there will be a shortage of houses in the market because these people are not ready to sell them. But on the other hand, if the Fed is going to lower interest rates, that will push prices to rise again, which will anyways make houses unaffordable for most people. Almost 99% of Americans cannot afford a house anywhere in the country. And prices are not falling because of the prices, because of the reasons that we have discussed earlier. At this point, the Fed had entirely broke the housing market. It no longer works like it used to in the past because there must be a correction for the housing market to function properly. On one side, the Fed, if, if the Fed is going to keep interest rates the way they are right now or raise interest rates in order to bring inflation further down, people are not ready to sell the houses that they have purchased in the last two years when they have locked 30-year mortgages at 2 or 
I mean, it doesn't make any sense for these people to sell their houses. On the other side, if the Fed is going to lower interest rates to make houses more affordable for people, that will create massive demand again and push prices to rise again. So what the Fed's supposed to do here? I have absolutely no idea. There must be a correction in the market for it to function like it used to in the past. And that's why a lot of experts expect a correction. Now, when that correction is going to happen, nobody really knows because we don't know at this stage how the economy is functioning, how the housing market is working. How big that correction is going to be, I don't know. And I guess nobody really knows. But judging by the fact how bad was the last housing crisis, I guess the next one isn't going to be better. In fact, it probably is going to be worse because prior to the 2008 housing crash, we did not have this massive printing of money. It happened because of the 2008. So over the last 15 years, we have printed so much money. We have inflated the economy so much. We have turned the entire economy into this one giant bubble. So if there is going to be a crash, I guess it's going to be certainly way worse than the 2008 financial crisis. But let's hope for the best. Let's hope that j Paul is going to come out with something. Let's hope that the Fed is going to come out with something and we will not experience anything like what happened in 2008. Because 2008 was really horrible for a lot of people. People not only just lost their homes, they lost their jobs, they lost their sources of income. A lot of people got homeless. So let's hope that it's not going to happen. But if it ever happens, I hope that you're ready. Make sure that you invest in yourself, you understand yourself, you understand how the market works, you understand how the housing market works. And if you have capital, then that will be your best opportunity to jump in and invest. And no matter where you invest, you're certainly going to make money because crises are the times where a lot of great assets are undervalued whether it's houses or stocks or even crypto. So invest in yourself, learn how the stock market works, learn how the housing market works, learn how investing in general works, because investing in yourself is probably the best investment you can ever make. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.